What man cave would be complete without a severed Terminator arm <laughs> to set things off? Uh, today we're talking about this T-800 Terminator uh, endo arm uh, replica. How I scored this one and some of the story behind these particular pieces. Let's check it out. Hey guys, thanks for watching today. We're gonna be talking about this endo arm in a minute here, but first, uh, let me say, please subscribe uh, so you can see more prop related and prop making related videos. Okay, now this particular prop replica uh, is from a scene in Terminator 2 Judgment Day where they're in Cyberdyne and they go in and they actually pull out the arm from the uh, from the original Terminator that was like a relic that they were trying to reverse engineer. It's a fun piece that I think a lot of people can come in and immediately recognize what it is and what it's from. That is probably why so many versions of this crazy thing have been made. If I remember correctly, I think Icons did one and then HCG and then Sideshow uh, and then somebody else did one recently. They were all very, very similar, minor changes to the base. The base lights up, it's pretty heavy, it's weighted, you know, it lights up blue from the bottom. Uh, I know Sideshow's coming out with a new version, which is articulated, um, and I think it actually has some servo motors in it, but it's way more, it's like $1,500. Um, and I would not pay $1,500 for a severed arm, but that is just me. Uh, anyway, this is not that version. This is not the $1,500 version. Uh, this is the cheapo, these go for about 200, maybe 250 to about 500 on the high side. They're resin with a few metal parts. The hand is fixed. I scored one that had been left maybe down in the basement. It was treated poorly and it started to like oxidize and get this weird finish on the plating and it looked terrible. So I scored mine for like a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, and then I removed some of that oxidation and what I couldn't remove, I hid with some weathering. There were a couple of little broken pistons and things that needed glued, but because I was going for a weathered look, you could hide those repairs really easy without even having to blend them back in and redo uh, the chrome finish with the chrome uh, effect paint. Anyway, that's how I scored mine on the cheap. These are really, really cool collectibles to have. One of my favorite things about them is that they have a small footprint. If you're just getting into collecting prop replicas or larger life-size pieces like this, this is a different game, baby. These things are big. You get a big helmet or a big bust and they take up a crap load of space. This thing for a life-size piece, very skinny profile. You can put it on your desk. You can put it on top of a speaker. I mean, they're skinny and uh, they don't take up a lot of room, which is good. Over the years, as different versions were made, some of the bases are different than others. This particular one, which I, I believe this is the HCG version, uh, has a light up blue LED base. It's battery powered. I've been meaning to actually adapt that to AC power, but it's battery powered for now. There's a nameplate on the front. The arm is positionable in its little mounting hole so you can kind of turn it to what you think is rad. Like I said before, all the hands and joints, uh, like the knuckles and stuff are all in a fixed position. Now, some of these, uh, and you'll see some of the more expensive versions that are for sale, come with a glass shroud. I do have a glass uh, tube for mine. It's on, not on right now. I had to get it after the fact because when I bought this it did not come with one. So if you're shopping around and you're looking to get one, uh, make sure to think through how much value you put on that glass shroud. This thing is kind of a pain in the butt to keep clean and dust because it has all these intricate components. Um, it might be worth spending the extra few shekels and getting the one with the glass cover. Now, obviously, once you have your shroud off, the arm does pop out of the base like you saw at the beginning of this video. So we just lift up here and it's got this one long, let me see if I can show you. It's got one long peg that sticks out at the bottom that goes into the base. It has a pretty good weight to it. So the rod is metal and it actually goes all the way up the arm to give it some stability. And then these pieces in here on this version are resin. Uh, and then the hoses are metal. And then most of the hand is resin with a few exceptions on the inside here. I will make sure we get some close ups so you guys can check this out. But it is really, really a pretty fun pretty slick, very recognizable prop. And then obviously when it's on display, it just drops right back down in. And then depending on where you have it, you can turn this thing to display. 
how you want. Now, one thing I will say with some of these older versions, if you're looking to score one second hand, is that the hole where this peg actually mounts into, uh, it really often chips because you're putting this metal thing into a resin base and it, that lip, that opening where you put the rod in wants to chip and the paint wants to get torn up. I actually took a simple metal washer on mine and just CA glued it over top with a little bit of kicker. That way you have a nice metal ring that that metal rod is going into and you don't have to worry about uh, beating up the base as time goes on. So there you have it, the T-800 Endo Arm from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Great prop replica. So many different versions have been made. Uh, if you can score a good deal on one second hand, do it. They look really cool on display and they don't take up a lot of room. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And we'll catch you later. Bye. Flaky. I have this thing balanced on this chair. It's a little, a little dicey. All right.